Hey, welcome back everybody. I'm going to finish this off with the AP question. I really encourage you guys to learn this question well. Think about this question. I'm going to ask this on the test. So is going to be on test. So something very similar to this is going to be on our next test, which will be in a couple weeks. Um, all right, so I'm going to walk you through it. A lot of fancy words, but it's pretty simple. It says you have flasks Q, R, and S, and they are either solutions of PBNO3, 2, NaCl, and K2CO3. Notice you have the molarity symbol there, so um, these are really separated into their ions. Um, it's also given flasks X and Y. Flasks, flasks S, X and Y are either silver nitrate, barium chloride. Notice the molarity symbol. These are all solutions. They are all soluble. Okay, so. Here are the solutions that match up with these, and here are the solutions that match up here. We're really, uh, I can predict that um, the goal is to identify the identity of QRS and X and Y. So let's go through this. Um, have your solubility chart handy, or I should say your insolubility chart handy, and here we go. When the student combined a sample of solution X with a sample, or Q, with a sample of solution X, a precipitate formed. A precipitate also formed when samples of Q and Y were combined. Identify solution Q. So this solution is going to form a precipitate when it is connected with X and with Y. We know that nitrates are always soluble, always soluble. So because of that, that solution, um, we, we get, pay attention to nitrates. So here we go. Let's go from the top to the bottom. If you took PBNO32 and you connected it with AGNO3, no precipitates would form. So we know the answer cannot be PBNO32 because it formed a precipitate with both. So it's not PBNO32. Okay. Um, if you connected NaCl, you would make um, NaNO3 and you would make AgCl. AgCl is a, pre a precipitate. So NaCl precipitates with AgNO3. But when you connect NaCl with BaCl2, you make the same compound. Again, you make NaCl and BaCl2. So NaCl cannot be it. By default, it's going to be K2CO3. So solution 2 is K2CO3, um, K2CO3. Okay, that is because K... Um, because Ag2CO3 is a precipitate, we know that from today's lab, and BaCO3 is a precipitate, according to our solubility chart. So it did precipitate with both of those. So, awesome, we have Q. Let's go on. Write the chemical formulas for each of the two precipitates. So we did that above. Oftentimes you'll answer these questions before you even begin. So it says when solution Q, which is K2CO3, is mixed with solution R, a precipitate forms. Okay, so when you take Q and you mix it with R, it makes a precipitate. Um, however, no precipitate forms when Q is mixed with S. Identify R and S. Okay, so here we go. K2CO3, if we mix it with NaCl, we get NaCO3 and KCl, no precipitate. So we know that S must be NaCl because it said no precipitate formed. So S equals NaCl. Um, and let's double check that when you mix it with R, it does form a precipitate. KNO3, not a precipitate, but lead carbonate is a precipitate, PBCO3. So that means that solution R must be PBNO32. All right, here we go. So this is awesome. 
We got K2CO3 for Q. We got PBNO32 for R. And we have NaCl for S. You guys out there? Yeah. Come on in. I'm almost done. Oh, one sec. I'm almost done. Oh. I got some visitors here. They need to be quiet for about two seconds so I can finish this up. Right. Then it says the identity of solution X and solution Y are to be determined using only the following solutions. One molar PBNO32, one molar NaCl, and one molar K2CO3. Now we know that those are Q, R, and S. So describe a procedure to identify X and Y. Okay, so if you add NaCl to um, AgNO3, it'll form a, si a silver precipitate. And if you add NaCl to BaCl2, no precipitate is formed. So here's how we're going to do it. Add, so this is one, add NaCl to X, okay? If it makes a precipitate, that precipitate being AgCl, X equals AgNO3, okay? If there is no precipitate, X equals BaCl2. So you're going to go that way. If you get a precipitate with X, it's AgNO3. If you do not get a precipitate, X is BaCl2. So if you do, that means Y equals BaCl2. And that means Y here equals AgNO3. Um, second one, describe the observations that you would distinguish. Um, describe the observations that would allow you to distinguish between X, between solution X and solution Y. So we did it actually. This is just add NaCl and the answer to 2 is the data that I just put up there right now. So as you see, we're, if you really, really try and unpackage the problem, you're going to answer some ones that are going to be further down the line. 3. Explain how the observations would enable you to distinguish between solution X and solution Y. Um, well, basically, that's a redundant question again. Um, so you guys don't even have to answer three. Let me really spell out what I want you to say. For one, all you say is you add NaCl. Okay. For two, what I want you to say is if you add NaCl to X and you get a precipitate, that means X must be AgNO3 because the precipitate you formed was AgCl which means Y must be BaCl2. If you add NaCl to X and you get no precipitate, that means that X must be BaCl2 and Y must be AgNO3. Okay, I want you to write that out. All right, thanks a lot. Have a good day.